Hello everyone, Chris here, and today I'm going to do a quick review of the Estes Skyrider Rocket. Yes, I uh, picked this up today. It was actually a really good price. I picked it up at Hobby Lobby. And uh, the good thing about going to Hobby Lobby is if you go to their website, you can get a 40% off discount coupon for one of any product that they have. And I will go there with my kids and we will pick out a rocket. And today we picked up the Estes Skyrider. As you can see, it's a basic uh, generic design. Uh, it's one of the E2X type rockets. Uh, easy build. So in this video today, I'm basically going to do an unboxing, show you what's, uh, what comes inside, some of the parts in there, and then I'm going to head, go ahead and do the build. Now I'm going to do the build off camera because, again, it's a generic construction, so I'm not going to bore you with that. And then I'm going to follow up this video with an actual flight test. So without any further delay, let me go ahead and open this up and show you what we get inside. All right, open that up. Now, whenever I do a build uh, or an unpackaging, I always like to place a bin right here for the parts. That way we don't lose any parts. Now, uh, something about these rockets is you can see they're pre-colored. Um, I believe this one also is uh, pre-painted. Uh, the decals, again, being very easy. Uh, I believe they're peel and stick as well. Now, there's some advantages and disadvantages with these types of rockets. Um, of course, the advantages being that there is very little painting involved. Uh, it's a quick way to build a fleet. Uh, some of the disadvantages is most of the parts are plastic. So uh, it adds a bit of weight, so you're not going to make any altitude records with this. Now, uh, the Estes uh, boasts that this rocket will achieve up to 1,100 feet in altitude, of course, depending what engine you put in it. Um, so we'll, we'll see. But again, it's, it's a great fun rocket. It's, it's, a, it's a unique design. Of course, it's a giant pencil, uh, as you can see right here. Um, the nose cone is a pencil lead color, uh, some wood in there. And then you have, actually have a body tube here with the eraser and brass fitting on it. And it's packaged separately. Now this here is a body wrap uh, decal on there. Now uh, one other thing about these pre-colored body tubes. As you can see, you, you always have the spiral on there. You're never going to lose that. Of course, you can sand it down and fill them. Um, but again, this has already been pre-decorated with that, so I'm not going to bother with that. And it's a two-piece body tube. I always believe this is so they can fit it in a smaller bag. Uh, this body tube, uh, look at that, it's a little misshapen there. Uh, that I'll, I'll probably get fixed out when I use the coupler to put it together. So we'll go ahead and put these in the bin. Here's the nose cone. Uh, one thing I want to point out is, yeah, there is a little color mismatch there between the, the base of the nose cone and the rocket, and it fits rather loosely too. So that's something I'll have to consider when I put it together. We got the rest of these parts here. Now we, we've got the uh, packet here with the parachute shock cord and engine hook. Now as you can see it's uh, got one of these uh, newer style engine hooks in here. Here I actually have one that's out of the package uh, from uh, another rocket I'm doing. And it's one of those quick release engine hooks. Now I, I am not a big fan of those. I'm, I'm more of an old school style rocketeer and here's a classic engine hook. Um, what I usually do with this just to, uh, again, just because I'm old school and I don't think I, I, I don't have uh, any problems opening these. So what I, what I usually do is I clip off that part of the engine hook, uh, file it down a bit to take off any of the rough edges, edges, and then when I make the engine mount, I'll just flip it over, and putting the cut part towards the, the top of the inside of the rocket, keeping a more of a, a clean, uh, the, the, which was once the top part on the bottom. And I'll show you this when I, when I finish the, when I complete the build. And you'll see what I'm talking about. Of course, we got some uh, pamphlets here. 
as well, some documentation. Um, yeah, the, of course, I've got a case of these things uh, right here, so I'll just put that with my collection. I've built a lot of these rockets. And here, of course, we have the launch lug, engine mount, um, can, uh, parts here. And we have the instruction sheet. Uh, this is pretty straightforward at this point. I could probably put one of these together in my sleep. This design is goes all the way back to the 70s, the, the late 70s, early 80s, where you had the, the Challenger 2 style rockets, and they just used that in so many different uh, versions. You, I remember you had, uh, the, of course, the Challenger 2 with the orange color. You had the Cadet, uh, which was just a black and white simple rocket, and then um, like the Star Wars proton torpedo rocket uh, using basically the same design. Now this is the second generation fin can. Uh, it's more flat on the bottom, which is great if you want it to be able to stand up, but once you get the engine hook in there, uh, that's not going to work out too well either. So you'll need a separate stand for that. Now uh, one thing about this engine mount is, uh, or this uh, the fin can here, is that it's white in color and uh, I'm surprised because, as you can see on, on the rocket, once you put it together, like so, you're going to just have the fin unit hanging down. What they probably could have done is um, molded this in clear plastic and given you the eraser color uh, decal to stick on the side. That's something they could have gone with, and so you'd have more of the pencil design. Uh, it'd be a little bit easier to, to see. Um, what I'm actually going to do with this fin can is I'm going to set it aside. I'm not going to use that because I actually have a, a mongoose here which has the yellow uh, fins on there. In fact, that actually matches the, the nose cone a little bit better. The um, uh, reason being is this mongoose is uh, just a, a spare parts kit. I, I have no intention of building this mongoose. Um, uh, the only reason I got it was I needed the booster for for this clone of the original Estes Scorpion rocket that I had put together. Uh, this I uh, constructed out of spare parts from a, a parts box and I needed the, a booster unit for this and I got a, went ahead and got the mongoose for that booster. So with the rest of the rocket, which is nothing but spare parts, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and use that for something else. Uh, it's always good to have a good collection of spare parts. So I'm going to have yellow fins on, the, on this Estes Skyrider, and I'm going to go ahead and put this uh, towards a future project. I just think it's going to match better in the future project. Uh, if it gets scratched, I'd rather not have uh, bright yellow shining through. So I'm going to go ahead and put that aside. Um, I actually save these cards. These are these are good because you have a lot of the information on here usually um, uh, showing you which engines you need. I've got a whole stack of these. I just file them away. Who knows? Maybe one day I'll wallpaper my workshop with it. So I'll just go ahead and set that aside. And here is the the. Uh, decals right here. Um, what I always do with these actually is after before I stick them I scan them and make a scan copy. Uh, in the future these oh, these will not last forever but you can always reprint them if you have them scanned. Uh, you can actually uh, reprint them on um, some uh, decal paper and in fact it almost be pointless to do this because basically it's just text I can duplicate that pretty well uh, in any program but you know for the record I'll, I'll probably just scan this anyway so I have it on file and that is it now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get busy with construction uh, again this is gonna be really simple uh, straightforward usual design so I'm not going to take up any more of your time. I'll go ahead and I'll do this build and I will be right back with a completed rocket. And here we have our completed Skyrider rocket. 
and for all practical purposes this is complete uh, I have left out the parachute for now and I'll, I'll leave this out until uh, the first launch that way it's not compacted in there but I do have the shock cord attached uh, as well I put a little bit of uh, painters tape around there to give it a little more of a snug fit uh, as you can see there's uh, a little bit of the uh, spirals visible in there as well as the connection there now if I really wanted to take the time I could fill this out repaint it and maybe uh, tape off here as well match up the paint a little bit better something I might do in the future uh, I will be getting another one of these rockets and making a few more modifications uh, I did use the yellow fin unit in this I think it just brings it together a bit more um, it's yeah you can almost tell it's a pencil but it almost uh, looks more like just a yellow rocket as far as anyone's concerned here uh, I one thing I did notice as well is it's just as tall as the scorpion and the mongoose that I have which led me to believe maybe on my next one I'll go ahead and leave off the engine hook and use uh, the mongoose booster on this as well. I see no reason why this cannot be a two-stage rocket. I also clipped back the engine hook as I mentioned I would do before. I, I actually just like these better. If you need to uh, remove the engine you're having trouble, what I do is I just get a piece of dental floss, cut it in a loop, hook it over, and you just pull that back. You wrap it around there and pull that back and it pulls it back nicely. Another trick I wanted to show real quick while I could was when I actually do join two rockets together what I do is I get a couple uh, wooden angles and um, I join it. I put one on one side this on the other side and put a couple rubber bands around that to keep the rocket uh, straight while the glue sets and uh, again this helps make sure you keep the airframe nice and straight while doing so so that's just a little trick I wanted to throw in there as well but this is it this is the Skyrider I will probably go ahead and launch this later this week and I will follow up this video with that launch thanks for watching and uh, let me know what you think uh, if you have any suggestions what I should do on my next one things you might have liked about this and things that you didn't like I just want to throw in it was a real simple build before um, it's an E2X rocket they're relatively all the same so um, again here it is this is the Estes Skyrider